Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about tripods, very specifically the different types of tripods. Uh, almost every single video, especially the, the live streams of Adorama, I get a bunch of questions during the video, and then also in my DMs, what tripod are you using? So I think people have a lot of questions about tripods. I thought I would do kind of an overview of tripods here. If you guys have more questions, put them in the comments below, and we will, of course, go over more stuff. But I'm going to kind of do a basic overview of the tripods as I have, why I have them, what I use them for, etc. So I'm going to start with what I think is probably the most common tripod these days for stills photographers, although that wasn't always the case, which is a uh, ball head. So I should say, I'm going to primarily talk about the heads. The legs, we'll talk about a little bit. Those, those really depend on a lot of things, but um, what you generally want... Uh, to do is, actually let's talk about the legs first. All right, so generally tripods are going to have, uh, you know, your leg sections. Now, the more leg sections you have, assuming the tripod is the same height, the more collapsed it will be. So a lot of times, travel tripods, for instance, will have lots of sections, and, and this is actually the 055, I think they call it X-Pro3, because it has three sections, there's also an X-Pro4 that it small, goes down smaller. In a lot of cases, that means that your final section of leg is going to be thinner, which means that those tripods sometimes can't support the same amount of weight. So keep that in mind if you're putting anything very heavy. I don't think that's such a uh, problem with most people these days. Cameras are pretty small. But if you are traveling and you uh, want a tripod that folds down smaller so it can fit like in your bag or whatever, keep in mind it probably won't handle as much weight. Just look at the weight specs. Other than that, another thing you might want to look for is that they are able to, like this one, uh, go flat. This is kind of an important feature for me. I use this a lot. This allows you to get the tripod really low to the ground, clearly. Um, the neck also comes out so that you can go pretty flat. This is going to allow you to go flat. It might not be that important for a lot of people, but for some people it is. The other thing that you might want is some kind of a way, this one does not have this, that you can take the head off and put it at the bottom of the neck here, thus being able to shoot down. The other type of function that you might want, and this is what makes this the X-Pro, is that this guy actually, the neck can come out and do this kind of sideways action. So there's a few things you might want to look for. That's all part of the tripod itself. Um, any of that stuff could be useful to you. I find this is great if you need to shoot stuff like on the ground, or even for whatever you're saying, get the tripod super low, get your head really low. Um, it can be really useful. So, you know. Uh, these are these are features in tripods themselves. You've also got your like aluminum versus uh, you know uh, uh, titanium or whatever they make these different tripods out of. Uh, you know that really comes down to weight a lot of times. So if you are um, again looking for a more lightweight tripod, you can get carbon fiber, um, which is going to be a lighter weight material. And if you do that, then you will be able to um, obviously carry it <laughs> maybe easier because it'll be lighter weight. I don't find that I care that much about that. You're going to pay a lot more typically for a carbon fiber tripod. And generally for me, that's not an issue. The rare occasion where I'm doing something like backpacking or something, uh, it would be nice. But the vast majority of times I'm traveling in some kind of a vehicle or I'm just carrying one tripod and it's not that big of a deal. So for me, I'd rather spend the money on a higher quality tripod in general, like buy a better brand, let's say like a Gitso or a Benfrotto than a carbon fiber for less a uh, less expensive brand. So, you know, if you're spending the same money. But that's just me. If you really need to have less weight, then carbon fiber might be the way for you to go. Okay, so let's talk about heads. Like I said, I'm gonna start with the ball head. I like this head a lot. This is the hydrostatic head uh, from Manfrotto, but the, the concepts are gonna be the same. I'm not gonna show you a million different ball heads. I'm just gonna show you this one. It has what's called a quick release. You're probably gonna want that. What that means is you're gonna put the plate onto uh, your camera, right, the bottom of the camera, and then you can put the camera on and off the tripod easily. That's really useful. I mean, you might find, it's more expensive, obviously. Uh, it's a pretty common feature these days. Otherwise, you've gotta screw the camera onto the tripod every time, and that can really be a pain. This is gonna allow you to quickly take the camera on and off, which is great, even in a studio environment, it's really good because sometimes you wanna grab the camera and move around quickly, or that kind of thing, right? Um, quick release, important. All right, so what makes it a ball head? Well, I mean, quite simply, there's a ball inside here. When you loosen your knob here, the ball head will move more or less in all directions. Uh, typically, they've got either one or two cuts in them, like this, so you can go uh, vertical, like if you're doing stills photography. 
This is super useful, obviously, because um, if you didn't have that, you'd only be able to rotate it around like this. This is going to allow you to go back and forth. The advantage of a ball head, and of course, it can, it can spin this way as well. That's, most tripods can do that. The advantage of the ball head is what I would call speed and flexibility. A lot of times, I will shoot on a tripod with a ball head, and I will leave this loose, meaning that I'm really just having this as a guide. You know, I, the camera is loose in my hand, and with this one, the hydrostatic one, and not all of them can do this, you can control the tension here. So I can actually make it so that I can still move the, 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 the camera around, but that if I let go of it, it'll stay in one spot. So that's a super useful function, and I'll do that a lot when I'm shooting portraits. I'll just leave it kind of loose a little bit, so if I need to quickly move it to catch an expression or something, I can, but generally speaking, it'll stay locked down. So like I said, it's the most common, I think, for most photographers because it's just simple. Now, disadvantages of a ball head are that because it's so loose and flowy, you're going to, it's going to be a little bit trickier to keep it, let's say, level, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of cameras these days have a level in the back, so it's not a huge deal, but if you don't have that or you don't want to take time to do it, the ball head's going to be a little bit trickier to get exactly back level every time you kind of adjust it. Um, speaking of levels, most of your legs are going to have some kind of a level, and what you want to do before you do anything is level the legs. Make sure that your legs are level. You could, of course, I mean, if I'm like, my tripod's like this, I could just level the head, right? And it'll be fine. But the problem with that is that if you start to pan or do anything else, you're gonna find that it's off. So what you wanna really do is level your legs first. Uh, this one has a level right here, most of them do. You just kinda, of, it's a bubble level, some nice simple bubble level. Get it in there, it's level. Now whatever I do with the camera, I know that if, if I look and it's not level, I can you know adjust here. So that's a ball head, guys. Uh, the other type of head that is probably the most common for stills photographers are called three-way heads, and I'll grab one of those. Okay, so this is the same set of legs, the uh, 055, but here I have what's called the three-way head. So again, I can do the same thing. I can level it up, but my three-way head is a little bit different. So I've got knobs and such on them, right? And these actually have uh, friction as well, which is kind of nice. What does this give me? Well, I've got, if I loosen this, this, and this, what I get is the ability to move the various parts of the head in different directions. Which means that if I get myself set, let's say, this way, which you could do with the ball head as well, if I move up and down or even flip vertical or, or not, this part of the tripod will stay locked, right? I can also lock this guy so that, let's say, I'm horizontal, and then I can move the tripod up and down if I want, or leave this loose, right? So I could just be like, okay, you know, and the camera, the camera will stay horizontal like that, or vertical, right? So basically, unlike, let's say, the ball head, where if I flip it, let's say, vertical, and then I want to go this way with it, I've got to loosen the whole ball, which means I could throw off my, my level. This is going to keep me set. So that's really the advantage here. Disadvantage, it's slower, right? You've got more places you can turn, more knobs to deal with, this is a better kind of option for somebody who's doing, let's say, still life or, uh, you know, landscape. You know, it would work for portraits as well if, you're not, if you don't do a lot of changing with it, if you're kind of like more of a, they're posed, they're sitting, if that's that kind of portrait. If you want to be looser, a ball head's probably going to be better for you. These are cheaper, right? So advantage here. Like, I think that head is maybe almost twice as much as this head. So I'm not going to say exact prices because I don't, I will put links to everything in the description, but I don't know that prices change. So I'm not going to say what the price is, but... That head is definitely uh, much more expensive than this one. Um, this, by the way, does have little numbers inside. Uh, so you can actually, like, okay, this is 45 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and you can turn it to certain spots. This is great if you're doing panning or if you want to repeat shots or you're doing, let's say you want to do a panoramic, so you're like, click, okay, turn it two degrees, click, okay, turn it two degrees, click. Especially, you know, if you know the view angle of your camera, you can overlap it. And again, because this is set, it's not going to change on you. Now again, this is one reason why, I keep stating this because it's important, this is one reason why you need to make sure your legs are level, because if I do this and I start turning, this is going to throw off my, my panorama. So, you know, again, make sure that the legs are level first, that's really important. Three-way head, you'll also see two-way heads sometimes, which are more useful for video, because typically the two ways are this way and then up and down. They typically don't flip vertically, vertically for the setup, so don't get a two-way head, you're gonna see they're cheaper. Typically, you're not going to want to buy a two-way head if you're a stills photographer. You want to go with a three-way head or a ball head. 
Now, before I jump to video tripods, which I'm gonna do next, I just wanna show you another little tripod that I always carry, because if you don't wanna carry on a big tripod, this can be really useful to you. Okay, this is a Gorillapod. You may or may not have seen these. They're really small. Um, this one is, I think, the five? The, uh, maybe it might be the three. But they're, they're based on the amount of weight they can hold. This can hold a small camera, like a mirrorless camera with a not huge lens on it. It's got a ball head, of course. And, um, and I do think they make a different heads for them. And what this will give me, just like any other ball head, is the ability to move around easily. But what's great about a Gorillapod is I can keep it in my bag all the time. And a lot of times you can find a place to put things. You know, like, obviously I'm standing in the middle of a studio, so I need a regular tripod. But if I was, like, doing an interview with somebody, let's say in their office, I could find a shelf to stick this on or put it on a table. You know, stuff like that. So uh, you can basically uh, put the Gorillapod anywhere and make it work. You could even stick it on one of your light stands, wrap it around a light stand to do it. So... This can be tremendously useful, and I recommend keeping it just as an extra uh, thing to have. A lot of times, let's say you want to do B BTS. So many people are doing BTS now. You could take your Gorillapod, put it up in the corner, throw a GoPro on it or one of your smaller cameras, shoot GPS, GPS, don't shoot GPS, shoot BTS uh, footage or have an extra camera shooting a different angle. So many options you could do with this thing. So I recommend Gorillapods. Um, they vary in price pretty dramatically. Um, I always just look for a sale. Whenever I go uh, into Adoram, They've always got like a table of stuff on sale and a lot of times they'll have grill pods. So I'll, I'll scoop one up. So I have a bunch of these and this is the kind of thing that I keep, you know, I've talked before about backups. This is the kind of thing that I keep several of them. I keep them a couple at my house. I keep one in my bag that I carry all the time and I keep, uh, you know, a, a couple like this one at the studio. So grill pods, super useful, really small. You could get any kind of other tabletop tripod. It doesn't have to be a grill pod, obviously. I'll put a link to one of these in the description though. And the last thing, and I'm gonna talk about it last because I feel like a lot of people that are on this channel are stills photographers, but I'm gonna talk about a video tripod. So when you see me do my videos, a lot of times I'm doing a multi-cam setup. So basically I've got the cameras locked down, as they say, and I'm switching between cameras to do different angles. Like I can switch to this camera up here. You know, I can switch to this one that's on my face. And that's how I set it up, right? So I don't necessarily need a video tripod for that because what a video tripod gives you is the ability to add motion. Okay, so this is gonna be a brief overview of video tripods. Keep in mind that there's a lot that's going on here and you could do entire videos on just working some of these functions of it, but I'm just gonna kind of give you an overview of what it does. By the way, um, I was using this tripod, of course, earlier, so I switched my camera to the Gorillapod. It's just sitting on my table over there. Um, so you can see that you can make that work. The, I've got a, a Nikon a Z6 with a 24 to 70 lens and a, a, a HDMI transmitter on top of it. It's holding no problem. Okay, so. This is carbon fiber. Uh, it's from, from my footage. Um, like the other tripod, um, it can go really low. You know, it's got all the, uh, that, those functionalities. You can actually flip the legs, uh, you know, really low. But um, unlike the other one, um, what you need to do is you, got take, you can take this neck, actually comes off. Now, a lot of your tripods don't have necks. So this is kind of a cool hybrid tripod in a sense. Um, you can use the neck to raise it up and down. A lot of video tripods, especially ones for big, bigger cameras, don't have the neck because it's not gonna be, you know, you put a huge 25 pound camera on there. You don't wanna be raising the neck up. You know, you wanna always use the legs. So um, this does have a neck though. So I can loosen it just like a, like a stills tripod and give myself a little bit, um, a little bit more height. So anyways, the reason why this comes off is because it doesn't do the thing where it flips sideways, right? Like the uh, the other tripod. So if you wanna go super low to the ground, you're gonna to want to remove this piece. Also, it's got a hook on the bottom, so you can hang some extra weight on it. Now, why would I want that? Obviously, extra weights can help stabilize the tripod. The heavier it is, the better, especially in wind. But remember, with this tripod, unlike the stills tripod, we're gonna be moving our camera. So let's talk briefly about that. Okay, so you've got a few things going on here. This Most video tripods, or good ones, are gonna be either fluid head or, or fluid-like is what, uh, sometimes what they call it. And what that essentially means is that there's a certain resistance when you move the head. So if I'm gonna pan the head or move it, right? if I'm gonna tilt it like this, I can actually feel resistance and you can see, yeah, I'll push way over here. You can see it springs back, okay? Because there's this resistance that's pulling it to the center. So that's always gonna happen, right? And what that actually effectively does is when I'm moving the tripod, and of course you can see this arm comes out really far, so I don't hold the camera, right? The arm comes out really far, thus allowing me to have much smoother movements uh, in both directions. You know, I've got the same thing here. Now, 
again, good ones like this one, you can adjust the, the amount of tension based on you know, how, how smooth you want it to be or how much. It's going to be smoother with more tension, but it's also harder to pull, right? So depending on what you're doing, you may want to use uh, the, uh, the more or less tension. So again, depending on what you're doing, you're gonna to wanna to adjust that tension. You've got tension knobs both for the, the pan as it would be, like here it's, oh, look at how I tip the thing over, right? You don't wanna do it too much because it'll, it'll be jagged, so you gotta find that right spot. And of course you can lock it down so it won't move at all. And then you've also got tension for your tilt. Depending on, and of course, again, you can lock it so that it won't spring back. Now, in an ideal world, you shouldn't ever have to lock them. The reason for that is what you want to achieve when you're using a video tripod, and I won't be able to do it because I don't have a camera on here, is you want to achieve a balance. So what ends up happening here is you've got the, the plate for the video tripod is unlike a stills tripod where it, you know, it kind of locks down in that spot, this plate can actually move and there's numbers on it too so you can mark where you've got it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna move the plate back and forth along this, you know, along the head once you get your camera lens on there until you find a place where when this thing is loose, it doesn't move. Like we can see it's sinking a little bit because it's not, you know, again, it's not perfectly leveled. If this was leveled, when I went like this, you know, obviously this was locked in, when I went like this, it would stay. And that's ultimately what we want, right? So when you get a video tripod and you're setting it up, you're gonna level it normally, then you're going to get your camera set up on it. I mean, they even make longer plates depending on what you're doing. You're gonna get your camera set up, you're gonna balance this whole thing out so that essentially you can leave these loose and then just with a slight movement, you can kind of even step back from it, you know, you got weight on it, you can move the camera to get nice, smooth movements, right? And they're very repeatable and very easy. And that's really the key here. That's what makes the video tripod better because while you're, better for this, because while on your still tripod, the three-way, you could move it, it's not going to be smooth, right? This is gonna be smooth, that's the idea. Now, one final thing that kind of makes this really interesting is that not all, like cheap video tripods won't have this, but it's super useful. And this one's got kind of a, a fairly uh, cool way of doing it, is a lot of times when you see the, the bigger ones, they'll be called something like a 75 millimeter or whatever ball. And what that means is that, a bowl I should say, what that means is that there's, you don't have the neck and you have like this bowl sitting in the, uh, on the tripod, right? And then the head itself has like this kind of, you know, dome, if you will, um, that sits in there, right? And that gives you the ability to kind of shuffle the thing around. Now what that does is you've got this big camera rig on here. Let's say you look at it and you're like, oh man, that's not quite level, something moved. To actually adjust your legs at that point might be hard or dangerous or not ideal, right, for what you're doing. And, and uh, so what you can do is you can do your kind of, uh, additional leveling by throwing, in this case you throw it here, and you can actually see that there's a ball in here that allows for a little bit of movement. Again, it's not a crazy amount, it's almost like a ball head, right? Obviously I can't go vertical with it, but you wouldn't use this for stills, but this allows you to, to basically adjust this. Now you're, you're pretty much gonna use this to, to give yourself level. Um, I can't think, I mean, I'm not a filmmaker by trade, but I can't think of any time, if you're a filmmaker and you're watching this, I can't think of any time that like you'd use that to go off level purposely. Um, I feel like you'd use the legs for that, but maybe, you know, uh, yeah, I guess maybe if you got everything level, you got the main shot and then the director was like, oh, you know what, let's do something with a bit of a Dutch angle. You could, you know, throw that in like that and then you'd be able to to do your pans and tilts and everything else with the, with the Dutch. So I guess you could do that. I don't see, I've never see anybody do that. But again, let me know if you guys ever do that. This is a really cool feature and something that this and the fluid are two things that you're only really gonna ever see in video tripods. It's a very specific to video tripods. They'll almost always have this long arm. And again, if you're in a small space, you can adjust where it is. So you can bring it in closer if you don't have enough room to move around. Uh, you can also you know, bring it up like this and forward. You can bring it in, um, you can put it on the other side, depending on what you're doing. And also the other thing that you might find in video tripods, like this one, this is actually drilled through, I'm 99% sure this is quarter 20, I did not test it. Um, but a lot of times they'll have spaces on the head, so I guess this would be the space, where you could put something like an arm, right? So you've got like a quarter 20 uh, female here, so you could basically come out with an arm to put a, a monitor on it. Because obviously, if you put your monitor, let's say on a uh, lockdown, let's say to the leg, 
and then you start spinning the head, you're not gonna, you know, you might not be able to follow the, the monitor. So you, you, these days though, again, smaller cameras, most people are putting the monitor right on top of the camera, but again, the head can sometimes take that. And that's something that is fairly unique to video tripods. Uh, you don't see a lot of stills tripods um, that people attach monitors and stuff to, but I mean, who knows? That could be the future for us, right? In any case, I hope that brief overview of uh, tripods is uh, useful to you. Uh, I get a lot of questions. Hopefully this helps, uh, helps clear some things up. Let me do a quick backtrack so we, we cover everything. Let me know below if you've got questions about any of these things. We've got essentially two types of still tripod heads. I mean, there's others, but those are the two main ones. You've got your ball head, which is you loosen it, you can move around anywhere. It's fast, it's, it's fun, you know, it's fun. It's fun, it's fast, it's kind of makes it really loose and uh, quick, we'll say. Then you've got your three-way head or, or two-way head. Uh, those heads are going to be where you want to specifically control each of the directions and have a little bit more kind of lockdown ability. I should also add that there's one other thing that falls into that category, and I don't have one here to show, so maybe I'll, I'll put a link or something. Uh, and it's called a, uh, a geared head. They're typically two or three-way heads, and what they do is, um, instead of just loosening that arm like we did, here, we'll grab it. Remember, we just like loosened this arm here, right? And then we we're like, move, move, move. What you do with the geared head is, is, a, is a little knob on it. You turn it, and when you do that, it slowly like ratchets very precisely. That is great for macro. It's great for product photography where you need to be super tight. So that's a geared head. It's, it falls in the same category as this. It's very specific. So if you are a product photographer and you do a lot of product stuff, that might be good for you. Um, if you're kind of more of a general photographer, these are good because they're less expensive. Oftentimes they come with the tripod as well. So um, you can be good to go. The ball head, of course, like I said, is good and loose. Another thing I'm gonna mention really quickly too, but while we're doing this is that, um, except for that tripod, because I've had that forever, I've been ma making a conscious effort to get everything that I can with the same quick release plate. This is, if you use a lot of different tripods like I do, it's very convenient. Like I have at my home where I do my live streams from, I have a, a plate, of, a female plate holder, so I can actually take my tripod, my camera and click it down there to do a live stream. Then I can come here and click it onto my tripod here. I can use any of my tripods wherever, right? So if you're gonna have multiple tripods, you know, you might wanna, get them in the same area, the same brand, whatever. Um, and of course, then we've got our Gorilla Pod, which again, I'm using right now uh, to, to hold the camera. Small, convenient, cheap. You can put them almost anywhere. And then uh, you've got your video tripod, which is again, much more specific for video use. But if you want to be able to do more cinematic things, like you're doing YouTube videos, let's say, or you're doing videos at a wedding and you want to be able to you know, track people, having an actual video tripod is going to be super useful. Even if you lock it down most of the time, it's still very useful to have. And of course, if it's not obvious, you could also just buy a good set of legs and buy different heads and swap them out as you need them in most cases. So you don't have to go crazy um, you know, and buy a bunch of different tripods. I have a lot of tripods, but that's because I often run more than one camera at once, so I need it, but if you are not me, and you just need to run one camera at a time, you know, you could just buy legs and switch, uh, I'm sorry, buy one set of legs and switch the heads out as you need them. In any case, if you have not already, if you're still with me, go ahead, ring the bell, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.